The last prophet in the world, last prophet in the world, last prophet in the world to show how to be closer to Allah. He is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Najid event was a very big tragedy for the Muslims. Unfortunately, in that attack, almost all of the 70 great Sahabas were destroyed and only one Sahaba named Amr, peace be upon him, was able to escape. On the way to Medina, he saw two men from Banu Kilab tribe. Amr, peace be upon him, thought that those two men were the enemy, so he destroyed them. When he later told the Prophet, he realized that that was a very big mistake because Muhammad promised that tribe that they would be safe from the Muslims. The Prophet felt so bad and sorry for Amr peace be upon him's mistake and decided to give the blood money to their families. Since many Sahabas died in two of those horrible events that happened before, which was the Najid and the Arraji event. And because of that, the Prophet became extremely sad. Both of those horrible events happened in the same month. And some historians say that the Prophet received both of the terrible news on the same night. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the best. After the Sahaba Amr, peace be upon him, accidentally destroyed two men from the Banu Kilab tribe, the Muslims tried to solve the problem by giving blood money to that tribe. But that tribe asked lots of money from the Muslims because the Muslims broke their promise. So the Prophet tried to collect the money from different people in Medina. The Jews from the Banu Nadir tribe offered to help the Muslims because the Muslims had a good connection with that tribe. So the Prophet, Abu Bakr, Omar and Ali, peace be upon them all, went to that Jewish tribe. The Jews told the Prophet to wait while they got the money. Wait, were they actually trying to help? No, they weren't trying to help at all. They lied and secretly planned to destroy the Prophet by throwing a heavy item from the rooftop. In the meantime, Angel Jibrail, peace be upon him, came down to warn the evil plan to the Prophet. After hearing that, the Prophet and the Sahabas quickly left that place. It was a very bad thing that the Banu Nadir tribe tried to destroy the Prophet, especially since they were at peace with one another. So the Muslims were thinking really hard on what they should do. They thought about the decision really hard because they did not want to be in the same situation like when they were in Mecca. In Mecca, the Muslims were weak. So because they never fought back, day by day, the evil people started to give a very hard time and destroyed many of the innocent Muslims. So the Prophet wanted to show the Muslims strength in Medina and decided to punish the Banu Nadir tribe for their big mistake. The Prophet ordered them to leave Medina within 10 days, otherwise they would have a big punishment. At first, the Jews listened to the Prophet's order and they started to pack their things. But the fake Muslim, Abdullah bin Ubay, told the Jews 
not to leave Medina and to fight back with the Muslims instead. He also promised the Jews that his 2,000 soldiers would help them and the other Jewish tribes might also help them as well. After that, the Banu Nadir tribe felt very strong and decided not to leave Medina and to fight against the Muslims instead. That was a very bad time for the Muslims because they lost so many men from the Battle of Uhud, while on the other hand, Banu Nadir tribe had a very strong army. Still, the Muslims did not give up and decided to fight against the Banu Nadir Jewish tribe to show everyone that they were strong and not weak because all of Arabia was watching every single move that the Muslims were making. The Muslim army came to attack the Banu Nadir area, but the Jews from that tribe went into their big castles and threw stones and arrows at the Muslim army. There were lots of date trees in front of the castles, and because the Muslim army could not see the enemy clearly, for their safety, the Prophet ordered his men to cut down some of the trees and burn them. Those Jews were hoping that the other Jewish tribe and the fake Muslim group would come to help them. But all of them broke their promise and left the Banu Nadir Jewish tribe all alone while they were waiting for a week or two. During that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put a fear in their hearts and they decided not to fight with the Muslims and to leave Medina instead. Soon the Jews from the Banu Nadir tribe left. Most of them went to a city called Kaibar, while others went to Syria. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about that in Surah Hashir. Did they have all of their stuff with them? Yes, the Prophet was still nice enough to let them carry their important things. But the only thing that they could not take with them was their weapons. That event happened five months after the Battle of Uhud. After the people of Banu Nadir left, Prophet Muhammad wasallam divided their land to the poor Muslims who did not have any land to live in. It was mostly the Muhajireen who moved from Mecca who got those new lands. That meant that for the first time, the Muslims from Mecca had a real home in Medina that belonged to them. The Prophet Muhammad wasallam also used some of the lands to buy horses and other war items for the Muslim army so that they could protect themselves from the future battles. One year after the Battle of Uhud, the Muslims prepared for another battle because before Abu Sufyan left the Battle of Uhud, he promised the Muslims that the Quraysh would come back to attack them again the next year in the month of Shaban. So when the next year arrived, the Prophet took 1,500 soldiers and 10 horses and started their journey to Badr. Over there, the Muslims were waiting for their enemy. The Muslims did not want the Quraysh to go to Medina and destroy everything, which is why they waited at Badr. On the other side, the Quraysh leader, Abu Sufyan, started his journey with 2,000 soldiers, including 50 horsemen. But on the way, they became very scared to fight against the Muslims. So they decided to go back to Mecca without fighting the Muslims. This made a big news all over Arabia. It showed that the Muslims were very brave and the superpower Quraysh were scared. 
At Badr, the Muslims waited for the Quraysh for eight days. While they were over there, they didn't waste any time. They did some business on their way and made lots of money, which is why the Muslims returned to Medina with great honor. In the same year, the Prophet heard that there were some bad tribes near Syria. That tribe went from place to place to steal and take everyone's stuff away. When the Prophet heard that tribe was coming to attack Medina with their soldiers, right away the Prophet sent the Muslim army to stop them. So that tribe got scared and ran away. Basically, the Muslims were able to live in peace for an entire year and a half. And so, the Prophet decided to use all that time to focus on spreading and teaching Islam to others. The Prophet Stories Creating videos about Prophet Muhammad Wasallam's life is a lot of work. And because of that, for this series, inshallah, there will be several videos in order to cover his entire life story. We are trying to produce the time donation or a monthly gift and if you haven't yet supported us it's never too late because we are always trying to produce the best content for all of you